Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, on a lovely Tuesday morning here in, uh, uh, well, in Naples. You know, I can tell you it's lovely for a couple of reasons, maybe two or three. Uh, number one, we're getting the hell out of Dodge this weekend. We've got a race in Daytona in the Miata. Uh, that's always exciting to uh, get away from here and do something more interesting and uh, racing around Daytona is one of those things. You know, I'll say this, we run in the spec Miata class, the, uh, you know, it's SCCA club racing. It's not particularly highfalutin, uh, but it is great fun. Uh, but spec Miata is probably the most competitive and prolific class in the SCCA. Essentially, you've got a bunch of nut jobs out there in these uh, $2,000, you know, tub smash. It's like a demolition derby uh, with maybe a little bit of driver skill thrown in. But I can tell you, as aggressive and competitive as that class is, it is nothing compared to my morning commute to work on the interstate. I mean, I don't know what the hell it is with people. I, I, I swear, you know, I'm not just becoming one of these old guys, you know, complaining about the price of vegetables. People have become more aggressive on the roads, on the highways. There's this me first attitude, the weaving in and out of traffic. And frankly, I blame Korean cars. But anyway, we'll get on with it. Uh, another reason it's lovely is nobody else is here at the dealership. That's always fun for me because I hate everybody else. And number three, I have a Porsche Cayman Coupe. Uh, you know, the last few videos I've done have been older cars, and I've been talking about all the things that we've lost in terms of, you know, our connection with the machine, the, you know, the way the brakes feel, the way the steering feels, the way the car feels around us, that all too often today it's all, you know, a computer in between the driver and the actual stuff you know that the car is doing the computer interprets it and uh, tells the car what to do and lost is that direct connection between uh, you and the car in terms of steering input and brake input and this sort of thing man in the Cayman that does not hold true at least in this first generation Cayman I suspect they've probably gone to electric steering and brakes uh, in the next gen so to me, this is probably the most perfect modern car, and it is so for a variety of reasons, mechanically and cosmetically. I mean, first of all, the looks are astounding. Uh, this thing really didn't follow the traditional path. Usually a coupe comes out and a convertible gets added later on. They chop the roof off. Well, you know, this car obviously has its roots in the Boxster, which was designed to be a roadster, and, uh, you know, this car comes along where they sort of added a tin top to it, so it was the reverse. But man, to look at it, you'd never have a clue that this car was not designed from day one uh, to be a coupe. That roof line, the lines of the car, uh, it is absolutely stunning to look at. I mean, you get like a yardstick and lay it down the back slope there. Uh, it's almost not going to touch anything from where the spoiler goes to the top of the rear windshield. Uh, it is a very a uniquely proportioned car, and it's absolutely gorgeous to look at. Uh, it even kind of looks like what it is, the Cayman. You know, it kind of looks like a haunched, you know, reptile ready to leap from the uh, river and, you know, eat some poor toddler. Well, the adults sort of have a laugh, but uh, anyway, it's a good looking car, and uh, I've always just really enjoyed this particular generation. And as far as driving goes, well, we'll get into that in a minute. So 09 saw a few changes for the Cayman, not cosmetically so much. They, you know, freshened up the headlights, the fog lights, that sort of thing. A few little bits and pieces. But the big changes were underneath. And uh, one of them was they bumped the engine up from 2.7 liters to 2.9 in the base Cayman, as is this one. And uh, it also moved up about 20 horse, about 20 pound-feet of torque. And that was a good thing because this base came in an 09 essentially had, uh, you know, very similar performance to the, uh, you know, first uh, Cayman S in 06. Uh, you know, quarter mile in the mid 13s, high 13, 0 to 60 in the low fives. Uh, this is a very, very quick car. And uh, man, is it fun to drive. There's big vented discs behind those wheels. Anyway, let's get into it a little bit. So essentially what happened is Porsche built a 
Beetle variant many, many years ago. This, you know, great engineer who worked for Hitler. I'm sure he's a very nice guy. And uh, he built a car that, you know, people went absolutely nuts for, uh, the 911, or whatever its variants were at the time. And, you know, people went so nuts for it, they insisted that they keep making it, even long after they'd planned to run it out. And, uh, and so they did. But essentially, that car was built with this big design flaw that, uh, you know, they'd been trying to fix ever since. And that design flaw was they hung the engine, this big air-cooled thing, uh, all the way back over the ass end of the car. So you want to talk about something to upset driving dynamics. You've got this, you know, weightiest part of the car hanging, you know, behind the rear axle, or at least, you know, in the middle of it, and uh, a lot of lightness up front. And that's one of the reason the earlier uh, reasons, the earlier 911s were lethal. I mean, especially in the turbo form, uh, the snap oversteer on that thing would kill you. I mean, if you, you know, let off the throttle mid-corner, if you kicked it in too hard, you would be snapping around and uh, crashing into something in no time. This thing, uh, they killed a lot of orthodontist wives, those cars, with their uh, sort of iffy handling. But of course, Porsche has great engineers, if a sort of lazy design team. They really didn't change the looks that much over the years. Uh, but the uh, engineers did a great job of mitigating that and making the car handle well. Well, not so the Boxster and the Cayman. Uh, they were berthed with a mid-engine, which is about as balanced as a car can get. Uh, so in fact, this big hump here, right behind the rear seats, is where that 2.9 liter flat six goes. And it puts all the weight towards the center of the car. And when you put the driver in the front, uh, you know, he weighs a bit, especially if he's, you know, me or one of my friends, uh, it really gives the car this near perfect 50-50 weight distribution and makes it handle incredibly well. So this is a car that was birthed from day one uh, without any, in fact, not just design flaws, but with one of the most beneficial, uh, you know, designs that you can have. And if you don't believe that, ask Chevy about their new Corvette. Uh, anyway, here in the back, you see you've got plenty of room for stuff. We've got some little cardboard thing. My detailer forgot. I don't even know. Let's see what's in here. Ammo clip. Now format hold downs. Uh, you know, a nice little area. They give you this little compartment here. This is about your only access to the engine, the oil, and the water. Uh, otherwise, you got to start pulling panels off. And that's fine. You really don't need to be screwing around in there. Uh, you know, everything nice and lovely back here. They give you a little net to secure any infants you might have to carry around or a wiener dog. Just stick them under there and they'll be stuck and they'll be fine. Uh, and uh, everything lovely back here in the back. Even a set of golf clubs. Not really a problem. Have a look under the frunk, which, uh, as I've said many times, is a word that I really dislike. Frunk. It's just a stupid word. Uh, anyway, here in the frunk, everything's fine. You've got a nice deep area for cargo, your, you know, weekly shopping, your anvils, your crates of hand grenades or ammo. Uh, everything's, you could probably put your infants in here too. They have a nice, oh, it's like a nice little playpen for them. Uh, and uh, everything just fine there. So uh, a very utilitarian car by virtue of the engine being buried in the middle. You get all kinds of luggage space. Uh, there you see those lights that were updated for 09. Uh, nice xenon, high-intensity stuff, uh, work very, very well. You got fogs down low with little LEDs next to them. A lot of air intake there to help that uh, flat six breathe. Of course, you also got the vents in the side of the car uh, sucking it in. Uh, again, gorgeous brakes on this car, beautiful vented discs. You know, same brakes that are on the S, essentially. They just have red calipers on the S. And uh, man, do they put this car down uh, in a hurry when you hammer them without any fade or issue at all. Uh, to close the hood on one of these things, let it click down and then use the emblem. Give it a little push. Whatever you do, don't slam this thing. Look at the beautiful design of the mirrors, the way the uh, wind is designed to go through there. Uh, the lovely curvature of the roof, uh, which means that a guy who's 6'3 can fit in it, or you can drive around with a helmet on. Uh, man, did they, I even like this little Hofmeister kink, this little styling cue there, all very pretty. And they just knocked it out of the park. I mean, this car just harkens back to so many beautiful Porsches, uh, you know, racing Porsches, and uh, especially the 550 Spider. It really reminds me of that. And I, I just feel like this Cayman is a car that is going to age very gracefully and, uh, you know, become quite, uh, quite a little collectible. 
Uh, you see in the back uh, behind the Cayman script, this little detached lip spoiler uh, will uh, electronically raise or lower to give you more downforce on your rump end if you're hauling ass on the interstate. Get these nice little color-coded bumper rats. Uh, single exhaust there in the middle of a diffuser and uh, those lovely updated LED taillights for this uh, uh, refresh that it had in 09. Uh, beautiful, beautiful design this car has. Okay, inside. Again, keeping with the idea of the stuff that I like on this car, uh, it is very, very purpose-built. I mean, it uses very nice materials, lovely leathers, incredible fit and finish, but it's not going to overwhelm you with, you know, sort of luxury appointments, you know, big wood trims or uh, chromy strips. Uh, it looks very purpose-built, almost as if, you know, uh, Prada built the cockpit of a fighter jet or something. Uh, very nice supportive seats, lovely leather, nice to the touch. Uh, these ones are uh, manual, semi-power. They have power recline, but manual adjustments. Uh, nice thing is that gives you an uh, extra inch of headroom. So if you're a tall bastard, uh, you know, you may want to opt for the manual seat so you get a little extra headroom. Uh, to me, it doesn't matter because I'm short. Uh, I like these uh, sort of jet intake uh, door poles, very simple, elegant. Again, uh, window switches and mirrors, very Teutonic and mild. Uh, nice little place for uh, putting in a little 9mm. You know, not bad weapon storage in this car, but not great. You get a nice little elegant gun in there. Also nice place my detailer forgot to clean. I swear to God, he has the uh, situational awareness of a mentally challenged wombat. Anyway, everything looking lovely in there and uh, all very proper. So, let's hop in. Fire it up and see what we got. Uh, we got the ignition key on the left side of the column, Le Mans style. That's of course, oh, listen to that flat sex. Sputtering and whirring and lovely little mechanical noises. All the stuff you think of when you think of Porsche. This car just reminds me of earlier Porsches in so many ways. Okay, you have a nice simple instrument cluster there. You've got 175 mile an hour speedo, which is a little ambitious, but not too ambitious. I think this tops out in the 160s. Uh, you've got a uh, uh, your tack right in the middle facing you, 7300 red line. Very, very nice. You got your water temp, you got your fuel. Uh, you got three little digital information centers beneath it. You can see we have just 18,000 miles on this thing. Very nice. And uh, you can go through. Uh, your different stuff here, your tire pressures and whatnot with the digital display under the tack. You've got a very simple headlight knob there, very simple vents, got, got lovely air conditioning in here, and uh, everything just just nice. I mean, the first gen Boxsters had kind of a ugly dash, and the second gen, which this Cayman is based on, uh, you know, really upped the game, made it more substantial, and uh, you know, you just feel that in the car. Nice self-dimming mirror here, your home link garage door opening stuff. Uh, here's something I'm not in love with. Uh, the, I'll say this, that the first generation of radios in these cars were terrible. You know, they looked neat, but they were actually terrible. They just broke all the time. So they updated them here in 09. The problem is they use this weird looking DOS based thing. Uh, it looks like the digital control on my big track from the 80s. I mean, they just could not have picked more antiquated display. Uh, but you know, it's fine. It gives you your we have a phone, yeah, we got a, not available, you got to connect in your Bluetooth, CD, AM, FM, that sort of thing, auxiliary input, uh, all fine. You got some heated seats here, your defrosts, your climate controls. Uh, here you can raise or lower that little rear wing manually, and uh, you've got Porsche stability management, the traction control that you can turn on and off if you want to go raise some hell. Uh, you got a glove box over here with a set of books, all very nice. You got cup holders that are hugely over-engineered and almost certain to break at some point in the near future. So probably better off just not using them. Uh, this is nice to see. This is a great six-speed manual gearbox. They did add the extra gear, the six-speed for 09. Got the uh, same box out of earlier S's and uh, is a fantastic feeling shifter that's fun to drive. And there it is. So there's the point. So, you know, we did that 944 last week. And again, I talked about the driver's connection to the car. You know, the steering was perfect. The brakes, incredible input. Uh, everything just felt lovely in the car. And this Cayman, 
is truly the most modern incarnation of that. And in fact, is you know, the 944 is an ancestor of this car. This thing's its descendant. Uh, you know, without the 924 and the 44, we'd probably have no Cayman today. I love the humps that you see on the left and right. The whole thing just feels racy and sporty. God, I wish I was taking this to Daytona. That free revving flat six. It's got Porsche's uh, very okay uh, VVT style timing stuff. So it uh, gives you a very smooth curve all across the rev band. It's very nice of this guy to let us out. He didn't really want to, I just butt it in. Our temps I'm gonna low, so I'm not gonna nail it too much. But I mean, there is a joy to having this sort of whirring, lovely flat six behind you. I mean, it feels terrific. Oh, you get that induction noise. We're gonna short shift a little, but I mean, you get the point. Man, do you feel connected to this car. Uh, the shifts, perfect. The steering, perfect. The brakes, perfect. Uh, you know, it's one of those few cars in the world that you can have fun with uh, driving underneath the speed limit. Try that in a, you know, Z06 Corvette. Good luck to you. Uh, you know, you have to be hauling ass to really have fun. Uh, in the Cayman, you can just dissect traffic. You can, you just feel sporty shifting and driving around at normal speeds. And that is the magic of this car. Uh, the additional magic is that it's pretty fast as hell, so if you want to nail it, you're going to get results. Man. Oh, lovely. That perfect rev band. There it is. The car is an absolute joy to drive and uh, is as pure a sports car as you could get in the last 10 or so years. It really is. You know, if you're thinking about one of these, jump in. You're not going to regret it. They're going to hold their value. They're going to be fun for you. They're pretty reliable cars. They're simple, easy to own, and just lovely to have around. Make your drive to work a joy, even with all the aggressive dipshits out there. So there it is, 2009 Porsche Cayman. Uh, this one just turned 18,000 miles. Career, white outside, black leather inside, a real sweetheart. Uh, if you want to talk about it, give us a call, 239-298-8000, on the web at aenaples.com. Thank you so much for having a look. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.